To help with your migration to Jetpack Compose, the framework contains a class known as the Abstract Compose View, which allows you to use composables directly inside of your existing Android UI toolkit layouts. This allows you to incrementally start adding Compose to your app in a way that works best for your project and your team. While we have the Compose View that allows us to insert composables into existing Android layouts, there may also be times where we want to smoothly share custom Android view classes or even composable functions across different parts of our app. Things could also start to get a little complex when we try to work with other parts of Compose, such as state, more complex composables, or even views that contain a lot of configurable information. In these cases, it might make more sense for us to utilize the abstract Compose view instead of relying on the Compose view itself. The key difference with this view is that it cannot be placed directly into a layout. This is because the abstract compose view is an abstract view class, meaning that a custom view needs to extend from it. With that in place though, we will see a similar behavior to that of the compose view. Once we've extended from the abstract compose view, we can override the content function and provide a composable to be used for the body of our view. At this point though, the content of our composable body is always going to be static, as we don't have a way for external callers to provide values for the content within our composables. In these cases, we're going to need an internal variable reference that can be manipulated and used to control the content of our composable. For this, we can add an internal property to our view as mutable state. This means that our custom view can still be inflated and placed inside of existing layouts, but this time, offering the ability to support some form of internal state. It's best practice in these scenarios to utilize mutable state of objects to ensure that the property is thread safe for Compose. With this state in place, this can then be manipulated from our Android classes, just like any other view class or binding. Also, we can now ensure that our composable will be recomposed to reflect any state changes for our custom view. While this is a minimal example, we now have a custom view which can be used to hold logic around our composable without this being bloated via the use of the compose view. There may also be times when we want to reuse composables inside of both composable UI and the Android UI toolkit. In these scenarios, we can split out the body of our content function into its own composable function, allowing us to reuse this as both a composable function and a custom view class. Here, we now have a custom view class which can be inflated into existing Android layouts, along with a custom composable which can be used within our composable UI. Being able to add this component as a composable or an Android view via XML or programmatically means that we can abstract out the concepts of Compose from our existing classes. Now, rather than needing to add a Compose view and then assign composables and their logic directly in existing Android classes, we can utilize the abstract compose view to help keep a clear line between composable UI and the Android UI toolkit inside of existing classes. As we can see from these examples, the abstract compose view empowers us to add composables to existing Android UI toolkit layouts, both programmatically or via XML. At the same time, it also allows us to abstract out some of our composables and their logic into their own contained classes, promoting reuse at the same time. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and be sure to check out Compose Academy website for more Jetpack Compose related content.